So how many times have you seen that when a family actually loses parents, it often loses its status altogether. You'd find that the comfortable life that the parents had built starts fading away as soon as they have passed away. And often the conversation, you know, when people are looking from externally, they often want to blame the kids and say that, you know what, those kids did not use whatever it is that those parents left behind for them. And I won't lie, I used to think that very same way. I used to say that probably the people that are inheriting are the ones that just don't have, you know, a better way of spending money and they are not futuristic in terms of thinking. Well, my thinking actually changed as soon as I started venturing into this line of work because then I saw that there was a couple of mistakes being made, not only by the people that are inheriting, which are the children most of the time, but also the parents do make mistakes, right? And I want us to talk about what actually leads you know, two kids actually being in that situation. Such a drastic status change. And are there any things that other people have made use of in order to ensure that their own families don't get to that? Because here's the thing, some people, they make sure that they do proper planning. And as a result, you'd find that when they pass away, you know, their kids still continue living in that status and they are able to maintain it for the longest time, right? So if that is your intention, stay here i'm going to let you in on a few things that other people tend to use in order to ensure that whatever it is that happens to them doesn't really affect their kids status and as a result their families live in that very same comfortable life even when they are not there well Without further ado, I just want us to get to the conversation. But before we do so, to those that are new here, my name is Yolanda Mnyangeza and I'm an attorney and a director at Mnyangeza Attorneys. We're happy to have you here and we're hoping you're going to invite others to also join in on the conversation because it doesn't only affect you, it affects the rest of us. So let's get to it. Now the number one reason why often the status will change as soon as the parents pass away is not the fact that there wasn't any money probably left by those parents behind. And in actual fact, most of the time you find that there was a lot of money in that estate. There were probably investments, you know, there were policies, there were pension funds, there was a lot, right? There were properties as well. But now, what happened is even with those things, still that situation managed to change. So why does this happen, right? So let's talk about this. Well, there's three main reasons that I've picked up which actually lead to such a situation. Number one is the fact that there isn't a lot of estate planning being done by a lot of these parents, right? In a sense that whatever it is that they are leaving behind, they are leaving behind without a proper structure, without understanding how those kids are going to get access to it, you know? And so then this tends to have a negative effect because once those kids get those monies, then things spiral out of control and as a result, they lose most of it within a very short space of time. And the second reason, right, this happens is because people don't take care of the most important things. For example, a lot of people tend to not think about their debts whenever it is that they are going to pass away. They don't have any plans in place for that. And another issue which leads to this happening is because people, again, don't attend estate planning sessions. And as a result, this is what happens. And then the third thing that often is the reason why the status would change, even under those circumstances where parents have left things behind, is because often you would find that the kids don't know anything about these things, you know? And as a result, they would not be able to get access to them. I don't know how many times I've met people who said, listen, I know that my parents had money somewhere. I'm just not quite certain where and how and how much and where to get it from. Big problem, because where will we start? For example, if you're thinking about something such as an investment, how many financial institutions exist in each country? How will we be able to tell, right? So as a result, you'd find that now the status of those kids would change. And plus, the reason for this happening is because often parents don't want to have these conversations with their kids, right? Because in their minds, they don't want to give these kids ideas and they don't want these kids to relax. But then again, it doesn't help because all of that they worked for, those kids don't get access to it. So in order to do away with this, 
let's talk about what you need to do on all of these three aspects in order to ensure that your children's inheritance doesn't get blown away and their status change as soon as you pass away. Let's talk about the first one. Remember what I said at first? First main reason why these kids status will change and their lives will be shattered is because parents have left them a lot of money, right? In what sense? Parents would probably have things like policies and would have things as, such as investments and they would name those kids as the actual people that are meant to benefit, right? So what happens is that all of that is paid out to those kids directly. You can imagine a child that is probably 24, 25, that has never had even 100,000 rand in their bank account at one point in time. You're leaving them something from a million to even above that. Are you expecting those kids to be able to handle that? I mean, they could be adults, yes, but do you really think that those kids would be able to handle that amount of money? Obviously, they will get excited and it's easy to then lose it. And then the second thing that often happens is, be, is this. At some instances, the parents would die when the kids are very young and the kids would be looked after by a family member, let's say an aunt or an uncle or whoever it is that avails themselves to say, you know what, we're going to take care of them because they've lost their mother or their parents, right? And often again, what happens with those types of policies, once the child is named as a beneficiary, often some of those policies will end up in the hands of those people we call the guardians who are looking after those kids. And what do they normally do? Some of them, out of you know not knowing how to handle that amount of money and some of them out of just you know being very bad in nature with money they lose all of it i don't know how many stories i've had from people who say that my mother left me this amount of money but when i got to 18 years you know by the time i was 16 even that money was gone right my aunt spent it on this and that and by then it's already too late there's nothing that can be done which means that the status of those kids will go back to zero and it will not be what you intended for it to be so what do i suggest that you do in this instance so first things first if you have policies and you have these investments you're not going to name those children particularly minors and children under the age of 25 right you're not going to name them as the beneficiaries of that particular amount because it's a lot right what you're going to do is rather name your estate or if you have a trust good idea to set it up now you're going to name the trust as the one that's meant to benefit that amount of money right so what happens in this instance what happens is that if you pass away then and the trust is named as beneficiary the money will go directly to the trust now how is this helpful what you're going to do in that particular trust you're then going to put in conditions on how those kids are going to get access to that amount of money you can even put in restrictions whatever it is that you want to place in there in order to ensure that at least that amount of money is going to last those kids you know a bit longer now to even safeguard this you know a bit better you're also going to name at least one person or you know two people from your family as the trustees and then also mention that they must have an independent person who knows what they're doing right so that they can administer this and this actually helps in the sense that once you have at least someone who you know has those kids best interests they can ensure that there isn't a lot of things that can happen that can go sideways and they're going to make sure that whatever it is that those kids need to get will get it right and also if you have kids above 18 it makes sense for you to educate them about trust how they work and if you have a vision that they understand it right because you don't want them to be clueless as well you want them to know what this is going to mean for them the reason why i say use the structure is because this has been the structure many people have been using and it has been the most uh, helpful structures that has assisted families to ensure that their money stays in that family and that their kids benefit for a longer period of time and to some extent even the 
you know, the great grandchildren of those deceased parents end up benefiting if it is structured and run properly. Let's go to the second thing. So how are you going to tackle the second issue, which I said is the reason why your kids will often be impoverished when you pass away? What is that? For instance, things such as your debts, understanding what they are and creating a plan around that. Let me just say before I speak to that, that it's important for you to sit down with someone, you know, so that you can discuss this properly and create a proper plan. Do not attempt to do it on your own. It has sabotaged so many families, right? But I want you to think about this. In the meantime, as you're going to plan to go and see this person, you will be doing this, right? So what is that that I say you must do in order to avoid those debts being alive and needing to be paid when you've passed away? For every debt you take out, there is what we call credit insurance that you can take out. It's a protection insurance. For instance, if you take out a loan, if you take out, you know, a credit card and other things, right? There is always a credit protection insurance that you can put in place. Now, what happens is this. A lot of people, when they take out debt, number one, it's either they don't know about this credit protection insurance or alternatively, they expect the financial service provider to just automatically incorporate it. That doesn't happen all the time. Some financial service providers, for instance, will incorporate it automatically when it comes to credit cards, etc. But if it's not there, right, it, unfortunately, you cannot blame them. This is your responsibility. And what you then need to do is when you're taking out debt, or if you have debt right now, you're going to call them and ask, do I have credit protection insurance on the debts that I have? Why is this credit protection insurance important and vital here? It is important in the sense that it will cover that debt when you pass away so that your estate doesn't have to cough up money that it doesn't have to pay for those debts. It automatically kicks in once you've passed away, notify the credit provider that, okay, or the service provider that you passed away, or the, you know, that your people notify the service provider you passed away. It is then going to, you know, kick in. So that is how it's helpful because then it means it's going to be like you don't have debts when you have passed away. So your estate will have minimal debts, which are probably going to be just for the administration process. So that is how that's going to help you. Listen, this kind of thing is very important. I have seen houses being lost and sold because a credit provider is owed for a certain debt, you know, by the deceased estate. Finding that, you know, what is actually owed here by the deceased estate is actually a fraction of the value of the property is the worst because now kids lose the house all because of this particular debt, which could have been covered had this person taken out what? A credit protection insurance. So as a disclaimer, this information that I'm providing to you here is not legal nor financial advice. I expect you to still go sit down with someone who can help you plan for this. But obviously this is information that I want you to have. And some of the actions here you can already take but do not take it as legal advice or financial advice. It is not sufficient for that. It is just information that I want you to know so that you understand some of the things that you can make use of, right? Let's go to the third thing. Now, the third thing that I said is also a contributing factor, you know, why a lot of children end up you know, in a different situation when you've passed away as a parent, for instance, in an impoverished situation or their status changing, is because you guys don't have the discussions that you meant to have with your family. And as a result, when you die, those kids don't know anything about you. They don't know where to go to claim your policies. They don't know whether you had a pension fund, where this pension fund was with, what kind of money, where it's stashed at. You know, they don't know any of those things. Some even don't even know where to get your will. Right. So this is a disadvantage because a lot of the money ends up not being claimed by your kids, which means that they lose out, you know, entirely. For example, in South Africa, the pension fund 
uh, said that it had 50 billion the last time I checked in unclaimed pension benefits and one of those you know reasons why there was so many unclaimed benefits uh, of pension funds is because the beneficiaries are not aware that their parents had pension funds and where to even start right to locate those pension funds and as a result there's billions of rands sitting with a pension fund so this is important. You have to find a way to filter information to your family, right? Even if you're not telling them about the value of the things that you have, you have got to have these kinds of discussions. Otherwise, they will be blank when you have passed away. And like I said to you, with regards to things like your pension funds, you know, your investments, there's a lot of service providers. You know, majority of the time, they will not know where to start. I mean, how can we even help them? Because there is no system that's going to, you know, have everybody's details and where everything is situated. So in addition to what I just advised you, there is a solution provided by a certain company that we work with, right? So what does this company do? So this is a tech company that designed a solution for this particular issue. So it designed a, a, a vault storage. Now in this particular vault storage, you know, this is where you store all of your sensitive information right now when you're still alive. For example, information about your policies, you know, uh, your pension fund documents, your investment policy documents, everything is put in there by you and you manage it for as long as you're alive and it is encrypted, right? Now, the nicest thing what they have done along with the solution is that they have included a beneficiary aspect here, which means that you, as the person who subscribed to that solution, you will name someone as a beneficiary. Why would you name someone as a beneficiary? What's going to happen is that once you have passed away, that beneficiary is going to be called in to come and collect everything that you have placed in that particular vault storage so that you can or your kids can get access to the information required. And what does this equal to? It means that the kids will know where to go in order to claim everything that you have. But now they've known when? when you have passed away. You can even store your digital will over there, right? So that they know everything and everything is in one place. How is this help? I mean, is this not helpful, right? And the nicest thing, in addition, this particular tech company, you know, also has a certain service attached to it, right? Because remember, they're not going to know when you have passed away. They will depend on people coming to them to say, okay, somebody has passed away. But now, as we know, you're hiding all of this information, right? You don't want your family to know. You don't want them to know anything. You don't want to have these discussions with them. So what they have done is that they've got a system that alerts them as soon as a death certificate is registered in your name. They will have notification of your death because of that printout. Of your death certificate which will then prompt them to call who to call your beneficiary to say what to say come and claim or come and collect the documents which your parent or whoever has left behind because they noted you as the beneficiary of this particular storage this solves the problem once you can do these three things i'm telling you the circumstances of your family will change in a sense that you are not going to have the same situation other families have been having. A situation where when you pass away, your family goes to nothing or goes to a status that they've never seen with their eyes when you were alive, right? So I'm just going to reiterate these three things again. Number one, 
you're not going to leave money as is you're going to structure it instead you're going to utilize you know entities such as trust in order to structure and govern this you're going to put certain people that you can trust around that to ensure whatever intentions you had are actually going to be discharged and number two you're going to make sure that you look into your debts you're going to sit down with someone so that you make sure that those debts are protected do not attempt to have this estate planning on your own you will still miss out on a lot of things i just touched the tip of the iceberg Go sit down with someone as well so that your credit can be protected. And the third thing, like we just said, you are going to make sure that your kids are aware of the things you are leaving behind so that they can get access to them, so that they can claim them. You're going to make use of all of the things that I have mentioned, particularly this particular organization or company that I was mentioning to you, very useful. It ensures and takes away all of that, you know, that fear that you have. You're gonna stop storing documents in your locker at work because even then it is not safe. So that's about it. This is the content I brought to you today in hope that you're going to make use of it. but just know that this particular video is going to be up only 72 hours because I want you to learn from it as soon as possible. Note down what you need to note down. Share it if you need to share it as of yesterday because the reason why I want it to be up only 72 hours is because I'm just prompting you to take the action. Do not delay. If you're a parent and you know that there's a possibility that you're leaving kids that are still dependent on you, you want to make sure that you take action as soon as possible without delay, right? So that brings us to the end of our discussion today. And I hope it was quite useful and it's going to be helpful to you and whoever it is that you're thinking about. So my name is Yolanda Mnyengeza and I'm an attorney and a director at Mnyengeza Attorneys. We will see you next time.